All right, AP Calc, this is part two of lesson 4.1. So I talked about what implicit differentiation means. It means, in this case, when you look at the textbook, I'm looking at number five from page 151. It says, assuming that the equation determines a differentiable function f such that y equals f of x, find y prime. So they're basically saying, find d of dx. So compute d dx to get y prime. All right, so on both sides of this equation, I'm finding the derivative with respect to x. So if it's a function with x's in it, it doesn't create a dx dx. And if it did create a dx dx, dx dx is basically the same thing as 1. If it takes the derivative of a y-defined function, there's going to be a dy dx that comes out of it. So let's take a look. The derivative of 5x squared. Do we need to use something special like product rule? No. You can bring the 2 down. That'll be 10 times x. Subtract 1 from the x power, and you're done. The next part, we need product rule. So I'm just going to go off to the side here to check out what xy looks like. So if I were to take the derivative of just xy, just that little piece right there, I would have to do product rule. So rewrite the function in black, derivatives in red. So product rule is the first times the derivative of the second. What is the derivative of y with respect to x? Well, it's just 1 times dy dx. That'll, be, that'll take some getting used to. Plus the second function y times the derivative of the first. Well, what's the derivative of x? It's 1. And because the x matches the derivative, like what you're taking, the variable that you're taking the derivative of, you don't need to put anything like dy dx or just a dx dx on there. So I am subtracting x dy dx. plus 1y. All right. Next part, you take the derivative of y cubed. With respect to x means you can, you can treat this like chain rule. Bring the 3 down. Rewrite y squared. And then take the derivative of y, the inside, with respect to x. And then you take the derivative of the constant on the other side, and you get 0. All right, so now the name of the game is we need to do some algebraic manipulation to get dy dx by itself. So solve for dy dx. So I'm going to distribute this negative to both parts. And you know what? At the same time, I'm going to move that 10x to the right-hand side. So I'm going to subtract this 10x here, subtract it over there, distribute this negative to both parts. And that's what I come up with. Now, if you find yourself in a situation, oh, we can move this 1y over here. Now, 
So you know what, let's clean this up. Let's just call this y minus 10x. All right, you notice that this expression right here, both of them have a dy dx. If you encounter that situation, you can factor the dy dx out because they're just being multiplied by variable expressions. So factor the dy dx out and you're left with negative x plus 3y squared. Okay, the final move is to divide both sides by the expression multiplied by dy dx. And you know what? I'm going to divide by 3y squared minus x. It's just a little bit more elegant. All right. We can't simplify the right-hand side anymore. So dy dx is equal to this expression. So I'm just going to kind of... I'm going to put the dy dx over here so I don't have to rewrite it again. And that's that. So still probably a little tricky. You guys are probably not liking this as much. I didn't really like it either when I first learned it. But I've learned to love it now. Look at number 9, page 151. Ooh, we've got a square root. Well, let's change that. Let's call this um, x minus y to the 1 half power equals 7. Now, you guys have a couple different options here. You can distribute that 1 half to both the x and the y if you want to, or you can just use chain rule on the whole thing. I'm not sure which is the most, um, the, the one that you guys would like most, so I'm just going to go with this right here. So in this next line, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply the ddx to both sides. So take the derivative with respect of the left-hand side and the right-hand side simultaneously. So this first one's pretty straightforward. The derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. Over here, we've got to use chain rule, so you bring the power down. Rewrite the middle take one away from the power, and then multiply by the derivative of the expression inside. What's the derivative of x, y? Well, fortunately, we already did that. So the derivative of x, y is going to be x dy dx plus y. and then equals the derivative of 7. Constant rule says that's going to be 0. Hopefully what's in the red here, I didn't, I didn't gloss over that too much. I just figured we found it on the previous problem, so there's no need to reinvent the wheel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to take that 2x and subtract it and move it to the right-hand side. That leaves me with 1 half x minus x times y to the negative half times this monstrosity. Now here's the thing. I didn't distribute the left-hand side. I didn't distribute this whole thing to this part here because I'm thinking to myself, I think I can get rid of that a lot more easily and a lot more elegantly than by distributing it. Here's what I mean. You can get rid of this half on the left by multiplying both sides by 2. Multiply the left by 2. Multiply the right by 2. So it completely cancels this out. Now we can actually cancel out the xy to the negative half if we multiply by some expression that pretty much zeroes it out. So think about this. 
what can I multiply by that would get rid of xy to the negative one half? Well, what if we multiplied by xy to the positive one half? xy to the positive one half times xy to the negative one half, powers of the same bases, add the exponents, you get an exponent of zero. Anything to the zero power is one. So by multiplying the left by xy to the half and the right by xy to the one half, you essentially get rid of both of this part and this part, leaving you with x dy dx plus y equals negative 4x times xy to the one half power. Which I just think it, I think it makes it a lot easier to work with. You're not distributing too many times. And uh, yeah, now all we got to do is subtract the y and divide by x. And I'm going to change this xy to the half power back to root xy, just because. And then there's an x here, so I'm going to divide both sides by x. So divide this part by x and that part by x. And your final answer, you can get rid of this x with that x. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too many examples. A lot of this, uh, a lot of this lesson is you just you trying different strategies on your own and kind of discovering a procedure that looks kind of like this. So I'm only going to do one more example. It'll be in the textbook on page 151 again. Let's talk number 13, and then I'll be done. So let me clear some space before we get in. Right. Shout out to my good friend Stephen Osborne. It's his birthday today. He's got a PhD in mathematics, and we worked a lot together back in college. So um, I don't know why I thought to just say that now. It's on. It's in the internet now. Happy birthday, Steve. Okay. Number fifteen. No, thirteen. Y equals the cosecant of xy. All right, so um, if I apply the derivative with respect to x of both sides, I'm going to get just a straight up dy dx on the left. And then on the right, I have to take the derivative of the outside first, which is negative cosecant of xy times the cotangent of xy. Remember, cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. I'm not done yet, though. I now have to take the derivative of the inside, which is xy, which we've seen it twice now. In red, right here, that's the derivative of xy. So x dy dx plus y. x dy dx plus y. Wow, okay. There's a lot going on here. You got a couple different options. Sorry, there's a big glare right there. Can we, I don't know if we can fix that. We'll just deal with it. So think about it like this. There's a coefficient of one in front of the dy dx. We need the dy dx here to be with the dy dx here. 
Now, before we distribute this entire expression to both parts here, I'm thinking to myself, maybe we can multiply by something similar that would neutralize a cosecant and a cotangent. So what would neutralize cosecant? What would make cosecant 1? Well, it's the flip. It's the reciprocal of sine. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative sine of xy. So if I do that on the left and I do that on the right, that creates a 1 in place of the negative cosecant xy. So this has basically canceled itself out. I can do the same thing with cotangent by multiplying by its flip, tangent. So times tangent xy on the, le on the right times tangent xy on the left. And now you got 1. So I'm not saying that this makes it completely obvious or, or takes care of all the intricacies of the algebra here. But what it does do is it shows negative sine of xy tangent of xy times 1. So it kind of absorbs the 1 completely times dy dx. And that equals x dy dx plus y. So now I can move the x dy dx on the same side of the equation here. So minus x dy dx minus x dy dx. Okay. You go on. And there's a y over here. Now, I hope you guys can see this. I almost, I almost color coded it. The dy dx in red factors out completely. Everything left over in the black ink can be written inside the parentheses like this. OK, divide both sides by the black ink expression. Divided by negative sine of xy tangent of xy minus x on both sides. I hope you guys can see this. OK, this is my final derivative. Could you guys see that? I really hope. Yes, you saw it. <laughs> All right. I, you know what? I think, that's, I think that suffices this lesson for now. Um, you might encounter some frustration with this just because the algebra can get very, very thick if you're not thinking in terms of simplification first. So uh, that's all I got. Hopefully you guys get something good out of this. And as always, thanks for watching.